no one really knows, bro. <laughs> I got so much pressure on me, dog. Like, I got everything to do. <laughs> this guy's been scheming for so long. And now he's about to lose everything. This whole thing was a, was a scam. It was a scam, bro. Yeah. In reality, like, you guys got scammed? Austin McBroom is the perfect example of someone who let greed destroy their life. When nothing is ever good enough and you constantly want more and more and more, eventually you'll end up with nothing and things can quickly turn into a circus. Austin This dude. I saw that. You saw that? Yeah. You wasn't, as long as I put on a show, that's all, that's all I can ask for. Hello, friends and internet acquaintances. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today's video is another video in a series I'm doing on my channel all about influencer scams. The rise in social media and the rise in social media influencers has seemingly brought about a rise in scams and shady businesses. So this series that I do on my channel is all about covering those scams and shady businesses, mainly through a few different specific influencers who have participated in a lot of them. Comment down below an influencer that you think I should cover next. And thank you to everyone who commented suggestions on my Tana Mojo video that gave me ideas and is the reason why I'm doing this video today. And today's influencer scammer is the infamous Austin McBroom. What's going on, everybody? We're known for being positive. Why you the side chick? Mm. On the side chick? Oh! What, 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 what do you consider a fight? If you sell, what, what do you consider a fight? Who the fuck do you think you are? You done been our headbands? You're an idiot. Family vlogger, basketball player, and general goon, Austin McBroom. <laughs> The amount of scams and shady businesses that this dude has been a part of is insane. Before getting into this video, a quick disclaimer, this video is not meant to point out every single bad thing that Austin McBroom has ever done ever. That would probably be a multiple part series because there's a lot to cover on that. This video's sole purpose is just to highlight the many scams and shady business practices of Austin McBroom to hopefully inform others and help people be able to watch out and avoid scams. This video is also a kind of part one of a two part series, I thought instead of just covering the Ace family scams, I would cover Austin McBroom and then Catherine, his other half or better half, in another two-part series video. And there's a lot to talk about regarding both Catherine and Austin, so uh, strap in, get some snacks, and we're about to dive into it. But before we do, if you like videos like these, then uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and you want to. And if you like this video, don't don't forget to give it a like also if you want to. And let's get into the video. So, who is Austin McBroom? Ooh, my hair. No. Good thing I don't have to know. I'm gonna say it. Good thing I don't have to be on camera today. Okay. God. Okay. My hair looks fucked up. I'm not feeling like this. Let's just go. Okay. Well, according to the site Blogograph, which sounds like a very reliable source, Austin McBroom is an American YouTube star, basketballer, and internet sensation. That's one way to put it. Austin, alongside his partner, Catherine, runs the YouTube channel, The Ace Family. Well, we're known as a family vlogging channel. We, we got like a couple of viral videos. I believe our YouTube channel name was Austin and Catherine Vlogstar. No, it was not The Ace Family. We changed it to The Ace Family like three or four months after. For those who do not know, or haven't noticed already, we changed our YouTube name to the Ace, the Ace Family YouTube channel has been extremely, extremely successful and has over 18 million subscribers, which is a number I can't even begin to fathom. Austin McBroom is also apparently a former pro basketball player. So Austin has always been like a very competitive person. Like ever since I met him, he's just very competitive. He's an athlete. He's been training his entire life, literally since he was a child. Well, I've had a D1 college basketball, D1 college basketball scholarship. But as much as Austin would like you to believe otherwise, he is not most well known for his incredible basketball skills or good 
basketball skills. I really don't know if he's good or not. I don't know enough about basketball. Austin is most well known for the massive, massive amounts of controversy that he's run into during his time as a family vlogger, which family vlogger and controversy shouldn't be things that go together, yet time and time again, it seems that family vloggers are the most controversial. Hmm, interesting. Choosing to exploit your children leads you to being a controversial person. I would have never guessed. Originally, Catherine and Austin launched their YouTube channel in 2016 as one of those standard couples prank YouTube channels. <laughs> oh, I forgot to show you what that was. Why is it poking me like that? Okay. But they quickly shifted into a family channel after the birth of their first child. And very soon after, the Ace Family YouTube channel became one of the most profitable YouTube channels of all time. But that wasn't without a lot of bumps in the road. Is that the saying? <laughs> The Ace family has faced a number of controversies, mainly at the hands of Austin McBroom and through the actions of Austin McBroom. Having a massive amount of followers, subscribers, and fans gives you a massive amount of power. And a lot of influencers seem to know this. And while some may use their power for good, most seem to use that massive amount of power to start a bunch of shady businesses and scams and manipulate their audience and fan base into buying whatever it is they're selling, whether it's good or not. So let's dissect some of the shady businesses and scams that Austin McBroom has been a part of. First off, the charity scam. How far can you go with lying to yourself and the people who support you? You can only get so far. It's to the point where if you lie too much, you can't keep up with your lives. In June of 2018, the Ace family claimed they'd be donating $100,000 from money raised through a basketball charity. The winner of that game will receive a $100,000 check to donate to charity. Each player on that team will get a portion of the money to donate to their charity of choice. And guys, that's the best part about this event, is to be able to give back. To us, there's nothing better in the world than to give back. So with that being said, <laughs> The event was held at a stadium and tickets were sold, which the Ace Family claimed would help contribute to the charity. You all will be able to purchase the Ace Family's charity basketball event. Finally! This Saturday at midnight! So if you guys have been asking us how much are the tickets and we wanted to make it affordable across the board for everyone. So the tickets are going to be $45. And the event ended up being a massive, massive hit and completely sold out. The stadium for this basketball charity event was packed. And a lot of people have estimated that the money brought in from even just ticket sales alone was upwards of $400,000. And they sold over 10,200 tickets because that's the capacity of the entire event. $51,000 plus $32,000 plus $460,000. The answer is about 543,000 US dollars. <laughs> Joanne the scammer is shook. And yet, the Ace family didn't even give away the $100,000 that they had promised from the charity event. At the end of the entire basketball game, when they were holding up a check, the check was only written for $75,000. I guess it was said that they were gonna donate $100,000 to charity, and then at the event, they only had a check written for $75,000. Not $100,000. You do have to have um, security, you do have to have things like that, but the amount of money that they pu pulled into the event is still not adding up. Where did that $25,000 go? That's such a random amount to just take off of a charity event. A lot of charities like this are also intended to be tax write-offs for the rich. That's just another thing to throw in there. A lot of the very, very wealthy will use charities as a way to get tax write-offs, which may still be better than not giving anything away at all. Though I know I've gotten a lot of comments on my videos about how there are a lot of charity scams out there and a lot of charities that don't do as much good as they promise. So you have to 
to be really selective when giving away to charity. A lot that goes into events. I would love to make a video and like more in depth of what actually goes on to doing an event of this magnitude. Um, you shouldn't say that because they're gonna be saying, yeah, do that, Catherine. We wanna see numbers and charts. We ain't got time for that shit. Let's just move on. But yeah, on um, to the next question. Just they, so they you get guys it. If they're know. part of the Ace family, if they're part of the Ace family, they know what it is. Uh, first of all, Catherine and I have never done anything like that at all. As you all know, this was our first time and I believe it might have been the first time um, someone has, has hosted an event like that. A lot of people make more money when it comes to charity events because people give their money thinking that they're giving to a good cause. Because they put that they were doing this for a good cause, I think that made a lot of their young fans' parents fork over the $50 ticket price to go to this basketball game. There was also a second basketball charity event, and I'm just exhausted at this point. <laughs> Austin McBroom was also accused by a small artist of stealing merch. People was hitting me up, mad DMs, like, you're not the only one he ripped off. He's been ripping people off. According to this artist, Austin McBroom got in contact with this smaller artist for the bands that they were making. So he hit me up and then uh, verbally on the phone, he was like, yeah, bro, I really fuck with your shit. Let's put something together. Talking about his headbands. I like his headbands. Went to the store, saw some headbands, hit him up, wanted to collab. Austin approached this artist and said, I love your art. I'd love to work with you. Maybe we can collaborate and do something for my YouTube channel. And this artist was really excited. It's great exposure, also a great business deal. So he was all in and all on board. This artist shared all of his business ideas with Austin McBroom only to end up getting ghosted by Austin McBroom and then later find out that Austin just cut around him, made his own bands that looked almost identical and stole all of this artist's ideas. And a couple days later, I seen on YouTube, he had on the band, some bands that looked like my bands for him and his daughter. It was mad thick. It was mad I just know my work and I was like. He was trying to get over on me. So I said, you know what, bro? You know what? I'm gonna have my grandma making my own headbands because everybody sell headbands in the stores. Everybody, all the stores sell headbands. You ain't the first headband maker. Who the fuck you think you are? You done been on headbands? An idiot. So I made my old headbands. He got mad because I posted it and I had a little following. He got mad with my headbands with L. He was like, this dude is, he, he tried to take my idea. He took my, the idea where you put the band around your head and you cross it and you tie it and you put it in your head. He stole that from me. Austin from the Ace family stole my art and I don't like him. What a great thing to do. <laughs> so already you can tell what kind of person Austin McBroom then in July of 2018, some pretty gross tweets made by Austin McBroom were uncovered and slowly but surely this family friendly persona or facade that Austin had put up had began to crack. One of the Ace Family's former editors also came out and said that the Ace Family never paid him and would have him work for quote unquote exposure. This director claims that he wasn't paid what he was worth. He was only paid $150 for his contributions and his work and he wasn't credited like he was supposed to. This thing is a whole jumble mess because originally we had we kicked it off amazingly, but it ended up taking a turn. Where it got weird was when, if you're not gonna just credit me for the video I provide you with, then just pay me my regular rate. Austin turned around and said that he was complaining about not getting paid for promotion, exposure, and clout, which doesn't make sense because if that's what he wanted in the first place, wouldn't he just keep working for you for free for that quote unquote clout? And Why do people gotta lie about us? Why do people gotta lie about us? So yeah, so like I said, we made a probably, how many total videos did we make for it? I honestly don't know. Cause it was like, some shit was little, like I said around eight, right? In the beginning when he was, when he was working for us, he was working for us for exposure, to grow his business, correct? Yeah. And then once we got bigger, he randomly started asking for money. I'm, I'm oh, the Ace Family blowing up. I'm itching for that clout pill. I need that clout. Ace Family blowing up, they got over 10 million subs. I'm trying to get some attention. I hope Austin and Catherine just treat people that help them build with a little more respect and think less of themselves because it seems like the whole world is centered around you. And uh, you really want to go hard, bro? Let me just mention the fact that every time you guys are talking about giving back, you're also talking about the profits you're going to make off shit. Then there was the entire Ace Club app mess. They have used their platform and their privilege to scam their subscribers and they continue to scam people and they really just don't care. It is actually insane that he is getting away with this and I don't know why YouTube continues to support and promote people who are committing crimes, and in my opinion, allegedly, this is a crime. In mid-2018, the Ace family launched an app that was supposed to have a bunch of exclusive content. It is very important to not only download the Ace family app, but to also turn on your push notifications so you guys can get an alert on all of our updates. What we're gonna put on our sections of the app, 
We're gonna do that later on. We're gonna start off with L's. And then we also have like really cool things about our app. So we have like wallpapers and playlists and we're gonna do giveaways. And you guys can like receive prizes and stuff, which is really cool. So Free March. Like, Ooh. And send you guys some birthday cards. One thing we must say is if you download the Ace Family app, we truly know that you are truly a part of the Ace Family. But once fans actually purchased the app, they started to notice that first off, there wasn't that much exclusive content on there anyways. A waste of time. They haven't updated or restocked since November and people are still getting charged. Scam, don't download this app. They just take your money. Scam, they never post anything on here. I canceled the membership months ago and I keep getting charged for it. I used to be an Ace family member and this app is a scam. You can tell people are viciously upset with this family and they need to pay up these people and stop scamming their subscribers. And on top of that, fans began to complain that their in-app purchases were either delayed by months or never even fulfilled, aka fans never received product, something that will begin to become a pattern in this video. There's actually a petition out there to delete the Ace Family's YouTube channel because someone was really upset that they have been scammed out of their merch that they have purchased. And several people who have signed this petition also shared their experiences, how they did not receive their merch. Apart from the Ace Family app, there was also the Ace Club website, which was almost an identical situation where Austin McBroom used a third party platform to develop the website and the website ended up having major, major issues. There are tons of people paying $20 a month for this subscription and the website isn't working. All of these problems were not fixed, even though fans continued to complain. So the next thing that we wanted to catch you up on is Ace Club. A lot of you guys have been asking about Ace Club. We recently took the site down for maintenance. So eventually, the Ace Club completely shut down. Austin tried to explain the Ace Club app failure by basically blaming it on the developers, saying that the developers had actually scammed the McBrooms, which in turn scammed all of their fans and users. Um, some of you guys have asked what has happened with the Ace Club when we were doing exclusive content with the Ace Club. Um, and unfortunately, the people that we partnered with in that adventure, um, they end up, I don't really like to talk negatively, but they just weren't good partners. Um, they end up unfortunately scamming us. Um, and it kind of like hurt us in a way because in reality, like you guys got scammed. You guys got scammed? Um, like the way the site was built, it wasn't built to the degree that we needed to be because obviously the Ace family is one strong ass army. And come to find out the site wasn't built well at all. So you guys didn't get the value and the quality you guys should have got. And that's why we were upset. And unfortunately, we had to stop the, the, the Ace Club. I love how in that statement, Austin acts like he's some sort of hero for shutting down the app, even though they kept it running for months and months and months after people were complaining that it wasn't working and that they were being scammed. But good on you for shutting it down months later. <laughs> On top of that, as someone who has worked with developers before and knows the process behind that, my theory personally is that Austin and Catherine paid off a developer, a third party developer to build the app. But the thing is apps need to be constantly worked on. Bugs need to be constantly fixed. Updates need to be put out, especially with new Apple software updates or iOS updates. And so there's constant improvements that need to go into the app. You can't just pay a developer once and then have the whole thing built and ready to go. It's a constant process where you need to fund it and put more and more and more money into it. And my theory personally is I don't think Catherine and Austin or mainly Austin knew that when going into working with the developer. And I don't think they really wanted to continue paying them to update the app. At the end of the day, Austin can't be applauded for eventually shutting down the app when he let a ton of his fans get scammed for months. I mean, that's just not an accomplishment or something good at all. No refund. Ace Family mentioned they refunded everyone that paid for this app. So far, no refund. Wow. Austin also claims that eventually they will be launching another Ace Family Club app, Ace Club app, and it's supposed to be a new and improved version. So we all have that to look forward to. The Ace Club, we put a stop to it. That was like, I don't know, six months ago or something like that. And we end up having to find a new partner, which created us a new site. Um, and he's been working on it for the past three or four months and just recently got done with it.
In January of 2019, the lollipop incident also occurred, which was another incident that really shattered Austin's family-friendly YouTube ad-friendly persona. And the whole situation is really gross, so I don't want to go too in detail about it. But Austin was taking Catherine's younger sister, who was a very, very little girl, around shopping in what looks like a mall. Guys, I'm in so much trouble. But she said she's gonna steal it if I buy it, so better be buying it. <laughs> God, I'm not gonna lie, Catherine's sister's a sad thing. And they go into a store, which I believe was a Spencer's, and the little girl insists that she wants to buy a lollipop. This lollipop is a very inappropriately shaped lollipop. And Austin says yes and buys her the lollipop and worst of all, films the whole thing as if it's some sort of funny joke. Are you really making me buy this lollipop right now? Do you really want it? Oh God. <laughs> Please bro, put it in the bag right now. <laughs> Keep that in the back forever. Do not show that to anybody, okay? okay. That's your little secret. Okay. I promise you something. Don't show nobody that lollipop, okay? Okay. Thank you. Let's go. And most people who viewed that, most reasonable, logical people who viewed his Snapchat story of this whole incident taking place were like, yeah, no, that's not a funny joke. It really showed a different side to Austin McBroom. Austin has also been accused of cheating on Catherine many, 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 many times. What up, bro? I gotta ask. Huh. There's every month there's cheating rumors about you going on. Oh, you never address it. Is there a reason why? One time Austin McBroom was cheating on Catherine and the girl he was cheating on her with left a lipstick in his car. And here's where I'm a little ashamed. We did end up doing the thing. So after the fact, I just kept hearing stories from other people that this is like what he does with girls and like all these other things. And I was just like disgusted with myself, disgusted with him. It still hits me up to this day and here's the real proof that it's really him. What I do know for a goddamn fact is one of my friends has literally the ace guy. And this is a situation that I kind of feel uncomfortable talking about because we really don't know the inner details of Austin and Catherine's relationship. And they're two adults who are able to make their own decisions in relationships. And I don't think that something we should necessarily judge them on. We don't know if they have an open relationship. There's lots of people who have open relationships and are happy and fine with that. So, you know, who knows? There have been a few very serious allegations regarding Austin McBroom. One allegation that was an R word allegation, but regarding that situation, no victim ever fully came forward. And the person that came out with the allegation was kind of picked apart in the media and accused of being a liar by multiple people. So the whole situation situation ended up being this total mess that kind of made a mockery of a very very serious situation and I think at the end of the day we might not ever know the full story on that so I don't want to speculate off of very little information but I thought I would throw that out there because I know a lot of people would definitely think that it's an important thing for me to at least mention in this video Doing the same shit he did before. Wrote that shine. The Ace family also did another shady basketball event slash giveaway. This year coming up very soon, we're also going to be doing another basketball charity event. Where they had announced on their channel that they were doing a 100k basketball giveaway. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, the Ace family is giving away $100,000. God damn. So here are the rules. Location, Los Angeles. Date, Friday, January 11th. Time, to be announced. We're only picking 20 contestants. Or contestants must shoot from 10 different spots on the court. Whoever makes 10 shots in a row first wins 100K. What is it with the 100K? The charity was 100K. Now this giveaway is 100K. I have to assume that it was for tax write-offs because it's a very specific number, but maybe it's also just because 100K sounds cool. When Austin talked about the giveaway, it was talked about as if a lucky random fan would be able to get the chance to have 100K. All ages and genders are welcome. If you think you can do it, hit us up. If you think your favorite YouTuber or celebrity can do it, make sure you tag them. I also put the video on my Instagram, so make sure you tag them in the comments. Guys, it's a 300K. You don't have to pay to enter. Although, we suggest, it's up to you, but we suggest whoever wins donates a portion to charity. You all know, Catherine, I love giving back, but it's up to you. And so a lot of people promoted the giveaway and a lot of fans got excited thinking they might have a possibility at winning this prize. I mean, 100K is a life-changing amount. But the event did not end up being that. When the teams for the giveaway were announced, a bunch of famous YouTubers were on the team. So here's the confirmed contestants that we have so far. He got Jake Paul, King Batch, 
Rice Gum, and Soulja Boy. But wait, there's more. He also got FaZe Rug, YG, Nick Cannon, and Logan Paul. And the next people I see are YBN, DDG, Jordan Jones, Supreme Patty, Jacob Sartorius, and Alex Wasabi. All famous and rich people. And the fans were really disappointed because it's like, okay, so all of these team members are already rich and famous YouTubers. Who out of these team members needs 100K? Not a lot of them. A lot of people kept saying, yo, give it to someone who needs it. Like they kept saying everyone in the event, you know, makes a lot of money, so they don't need it. Then during the actual event, no one actually was able to win the prize. And it just kept going on and on and on with all of these YouTubers basically failing at the entire thing. So Austin calls upon a random person from the crowd. And who does he call upon exactly? A close friend of his that he knew from his days playing basketball. I'm gonna go ahead and say real quick, add up two of my good basketball friends, someone who actually played basketball, college basketball. I want them to come out, I'm gonna let them get a chance too. Okay, okay. Oh, okay, you can tell, he can shoot, he can shoot. Oh yeah, he got that shot. Oh, he got the rhythm, he can this is it! This is it! This is it! Ah! <laughs> And what do you know? This dude ends up winning the prize in like just a few seconds, super quickly, super easily. He wins the 100K. Somebody really won. And the best part about it, the person that won needed the money the most. And he did say he's gonna donate his portion to charity, whatever it is. It can be anything, just as long as you donate something to charity, it's the only thing that matters, it's always for a good cause. And something about that is just really, really sketchy to me, because once again, there's just no way to prove that Austin actually gave away 100k to his friend. They could have cut a deal and basically been like, okay, if you come in and win this giveaway, I'll give you like a small cut of this or something like that. So it's just kind of shady. And also, in general, it was never a giveaway to begin with. It was basically a gift exchange between friends. He was the happiest dude in the world. He said that 100,000 is the same amount he would have made overseas in three, four years. And he said Stop. that he's gonna use the 100,000 to move out of his parents' house. Oh my God. And he did say he's gonna donate a portion to charity, which is dope, which is what we wanted. And I believe him because he's a good friend of mine. I've known him forever, so wow. I trust him in that. And it's gonna change, it's gonna change a lot for him because he, he really needs the money. Oh and that's the best part about this whole thing. Like he wasn't even a part of the contest and he won. It's just the way that it was blown out of proportion and the way that Austin gave a lot of his fans hopes up is just really sad. And on top of that, the Ace family has done a lot of questionable giveaways. They're always doing some sort of giveaway that's supposed to give back to the fans, but it never actually delivers on what it promises or a lot of it is just to benefit the Ace family and give them more fame and attention, which I think is just kind of a scummy thing to do because you're basically pretending to give back to your fans who look up to you and value you immensely and then you never actually do and just continue to take advantage of them for looking up to you. That's kind of scummy. In 2020, the Ace family launched their newest endeavor, Silly Juice, which was intended to be a new take on kids' juices, which also kind of tells you who their audience is. If they're creating a juice to market to children, they probably don't have a ton of adult audience members. And Silly Juice is definitely a very silly brand for a number of reasons. The first one being, Silly Juice has an insane amount of sugar in it. Even though it's kind of marketed as a better, healthier option for juices, it still has an insane amount of sugar. And on top of that, when people ordered Silly Juices and received their order, so, so many people reported packages that were either broken and damaged or even opened and had mold in it. And this one? So these are not, I don't even know why the freaking bang came off. And here's another one. So these are perfectly new. You could see that they still have gas. And then I don't know what the fuck that mold came there. But so you can see in this quick video, this girl got an order of juice and it literally had one bottle completely drained. There was mold on their bottles. It's like a blue mold. Which is a pretty serious thing, especially if children are buying this. Maybe you wanna figure that out. Yet shady juice, shady juice. 
<laughs> yet Silly Juice is still seemingly thriving and they're still going strong and posting often on their social media about all of their juices. So those were some of the earlier scams of Austin McBroom, but let's talk about some of the latest scams because there's a lot of new developing things that have come out that we just have to talk about. And there's some of by far the worst scams in this video. In February of 2021, Austin McBroom announced his latest ambitious business scheme, I mean business venture, called How I Became a Millionaire. Can you guess, can you guess what type of business this is? Can you guess what this is? My social media program, I'm so excited for it just because I've always wanted to give knowledge. Knowledge? Yeah, I've always wanted to give game give knowledge, knowledge on everything that we've experienced over the past five, six years. Technically, you could just Google all of that for free, but I'd rather hear it from Austin. If you've been following me for a little while, you probably already know something I hate the most are these get rich quick schemes or courses that are supposed to teach you how to get rich quick. The only people they ever benefit are the course sellers themselves or the get rich gurus. Um, if you guys are interested in, in taking my program, because my program consists of four courses, which is how to grow your social media platforms, how to make money from social media, how to start a business, and how to grow your business. Lately, a ton of YouTubers have decided to cross over into this realm and sell a quick and easy course. Basically, because it's super easy to just post a course, promote it, cash in quickly, and then you'll always notice a few months later, the site ends up disappearing. The Instagram is totally inactive. They've had exactly six posts on there every time I've checked. And that follower number has only been going down, so they're not accepting anyone new. So it's probably safe to assume that they're not keeping up with the six hundred dollar a year program that they make. It's not actually a sustainable business model and the only person that is getting rich quickly is the scammer, the guru themselves. So Hi Bam, aka How I Became a Millionaire, we're gonna call it Hi Bam, is an online learning program to teach users how to become millionaire social media influencers just like Austin McBroom. Austin is of course not the first YouTuber to do this, most notably Jake Paul has done multiple get rich quick courses or how to become a rich and famous social media star courses. And I've noticed every YouTuber who does this has a fairly young audience. And instead of promoting the course on just how to get rich quickly, like some of the other scammers we've talked about on this channel, a lot of these YouTubers promote it as how to become a rich and famous YouTuber or social media star. And so I think a lot of these YouTubers and influencers are capitalizing off of their young audience's desire to become a YouTuber one day. They're sort of capitalizing off of that parasocial relationship. They know that their young audience looks up to them and wants to be them one day. So what do you do if you're a shady, shitty person who wants to capitalize off of your audience's admiration of you? You sell them a course and give them the promise that they can be able to become you through buying this course. Nowadays, since social media is, is everything, I feel like anything you do, you have to be on social media, right? Everybody's on social media now. And I feel like there's a lot of people out there looking for answers and I feel like, I'm your guy. The whole thing screams incredibly predatory, but it's kind of a good thing that these courses are really just a complete scam made to benefit the YouTubers themselves because if they were to actually work, that would mean that we'd have more Jake Pauls and Austin McBrooms running around in the world. And I don't think the world needs more of that. So <laughs> high bam courses have titles like how to make money from social media and how to grow your social media platforms. And in order to access all of these courses, you have to buy the gold membership, which is $49.99 a month. Even though there's only four courses in the entire platform, you have to pay monthly? I don't understand why there's no continuing education necessarily. So let's look at the intro video on the HiBam website to see what Austin himself has to say about this revolutionary course. This is where it all started. 
babe, I just realized what might happen pretty soon. Um, I think that there's going to be some company that comes out that contacts, you know, all the shady influencers and is like, hey, we'll build a get rich quick course for you. All you have to do is promote it. I swear to God that's going to happen. And a ton of influencers are going to come out with these types of courses. Prediction. But God opened up another door. And so we fast forward. The standard get rich quick guru course that's like, I came from nothing and now look at how rich I am. Here in my garage, just bought this uh, new Lamborghini here. Because life is always that simple. <laughs> now this is my home, my dream home. And I've been very blessed and fortunate to be able to have done it through the power of social media, which is why I'm here today to teach all of you the secrets to social media and to help you accomplish your dreams. In this program, I'll be teaching four courses. The first course is how to grow your social media platforms. The second course is how to make money from social media. The third course is how to start a business. And the last course is how to grow your business. You must join now. You only have 24 hours. You only have 24 hours. You gotta sign up in 24 hours. <laughs> Sounds legit. Now you can see why I was so excited to sign up for this. However, I couldn't because I guess I missed the enrollment window. So I had to wait another month and a half. I don't know what else to say. I guess the next time I'll see you guys, we'll be inside the program. At least that video was slightly better than a Ty Lopez video, um, but both don't really give you a lot of knowledge. Knowledge. Give knowledge. Besides just uh, the same standard format of look at these things I own. See, I'm an expert in this. Buy my course. Fans were also reporting that surprise, surprise, the website, Hi Bam's website wasn't exactly working and their cards were declined and they were booted from the site when they tried to enroll. I made sure that I would be there. I sat and watched as that countdown hit zero, finger hovering over the mouse, and wouldn't you know it, nothing happened. I couldn't join, the text didn't change, it still told me I needed to follow the timer, which was now gone. How am I gonna become a millionaire now? And that's when it hit me. I just got scammed out of getting scammed. Since I couldn't join the program, the only recent updates I could find were in a video by a YouTuber named Sloan, and he actually had screenshots from some of his subscribers who did sign up for the program. Lots of not-so-surprising details here, like the information is not even remotely valuable, the videos seem rushed, none of the live streams were ever done on time, and it makes me sad that even with all of that bullshit, the fans still want to forgive them. And that's what's gotta be the most fucked up part of all this, is that you are specifically targeting your biggest fans. You're taking advantage of the people who trust you the most. Austin justified this by saying on the high Bam Instagram that they're just overwhelmed with so much traffic, so much demand to learn the wisdom from Austin McBroom, which is what's causing all of these problems. And if that is true, that is really concerning because um, I do not think it's the best idea to buy from a site like this. In my opinion, these types of sites have and always will be a way for the guru to have a quick cash grab. That's it. Most of them don't teach anything new and revolutionary or teach the same thing again and again and again. And you can find so much, so much valuable information online for free or through trusted educational platforms and sites that have much more legit courses than these. So Austin has gotten a ton of backlash on this course and the shady ways that he's promoting this course and the fact that he has such a young audience that he's promoting this type of course to, all of it, it's just like, why? I mean, of course you did, but why? Then, right after Austin launched his Get Rich Quick scheme, I mean, online course, another controversy involving a McBroom shady business popped off, and that is the YouTuber versus TikToker boxing match. A few weeks ago, there was a big event called Social Gloves where popular creators on TikTok would box against popular creators on YouTube. Some of the biggest names on each platform were chosen to participate. There was a lot of hype surrounding the event as the fighters were promoting the event to their millions of followers on social media for a couple of months. Yet another company of Austin's that wasn't fulfilling on its promises. In June of 2021, Austin was accused of scamming participants in the YouTuber versus TikToker boxing match. Austin decided to get in on the recent phenomenon of social media stars beating each other up for money? 
which is an interesting phenomenon to me. If you want me to cover the whole boxing and social media thing that's been happening lately and also the business behind it and the massive amount of money that's being made in these types of things, then definitely comment down below and I might do a video on that. So Austin McBroom became a boxer in the Battle of the Platforms boxing match, which was intended to be a massive boxing match of YouTubers versus TikTokers that battle it out for the ultimate prize of one million dollars. Cue the Dr. Evil. One million dollars. Now you guys had a bet. You're getting five mil. But Austin says, listen, if you win, he's going to give you a million out of his pocket. Is that bet still on? Yeah. yeah. Put a million dollars up like me. All right. I'll do a million dollars just like you. You do a million dollars. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, we just have a million dollar bet. Y'all got that right? You shook my hand. Bryce Hall claimed that he was going to make $5 million and a percentage of pay-per-view. Austin agreed with that number and said he'd be making the same. I can definitely see the brilliance of these types of boxing matches because most of the social media stars that participate in these are pretty unlikable characters. So I think a lot of people can't resist the opportunity to watch these stars get beaten up in the ring. The event had seven fights between YouTubers and TikTokers, and the headlining match was between Austin McBroom himself and TikToker Bryce Hall. He keeps saying, you know, if we fight, it has to be underneath his terms. Right. You know, I actually talked to producers yesterday, and we're making it to where it's his terms. He's getting his five million guaranteed. Five million? Five million. I, know, I probably shouldn't be saying some of this shit, but I'm just gonna say. But like legit though, he's getting his like five million. million. And who ended up taking home the prize? Austin McBroom did. I see it. I see it. Ah! I see it. Let's go. Apparently, Austin just happened to win the entire thing. Of course, this $1 million prize wouldn't be that weird if it wasn't for the fact that Austin McBroom himself, allegedly, owned the company, the production company, that put on the entire event. Who's behind all this? Who actually ran the event? Here's the trademark registration for Social Gloves. The owner is listed as Ace Hat Collection. Here is Ace Hat Collection, Inks filing, and look who the director is. It's Austin McBroom. Multiple people have reported, and Austin has yet to deny, that Austin McBroom owns Social Gloves, the company that's behind the battle of the platforms. So Austin literally, quite literally, allegedly, won one million dollars from his own event. That's suspicious. That's weird. Then, on top of that, several weeks after the event, many influencers and participants in the event came forward to say that Austin McBroom and Social Gloves has yet to compensate them for the time that they participated in that event. I didn't get fucking paid for the fight. You don't need a crystal ball to see that this is like everything that Ace Family touches is a nightmare. One of the announcers was like, I didn't get paid. But did the fighters not get paid? Nope. Nobody got paid. Fighters didn't get paid, artists didn't get paid, no, no, no one got paid. So was the event just run poorly? Yeah, I, I think, yeah, I think so. It, it so was you like, haven't been paid yet? Mm -mm, nope. What's the next event, bro? Hey, what, what, what are your thoughts on us? Allegedly, the guy's not getting paid. Josh Richards, who's apparently a TikToker and podcaster, as well as Jake Paul, have both said on separate podcasts that allegedly Social Gloves is actually going bankrupt because they predicted that the event would have much better reception than it did, and they predicted they'd be able to sell out a lot more tickets than they actually did. They must be saying they're getting paid because this would be I'm a huge 95 story. I'm 95% sure that they filed for bankruptcy. Um, like two days ago or something. I heard there was there was suing involved already. Billboard actually reported last month that the event was a financial flop and that it lost about ten million dollars. Like that is a crazy amount of money. And honestly, in my opinion, I think we're gonna see Social Gloves, Austin's company, file for bankruptcy. They lost a lot of money on this whole event since they had so many stars, influencers, and even celebrities participating in it. I mean, you can literally see DJ Khaled on stage trying to hype up a crowd. Meanwhile, there's barely anyone in the crowd. 
And I kind of feel bad for DJ Khaled watching that whole thing. It's kind of sad, but also hilarious. Austin McBroom responded to all of these allegations by saying, 100,000 PPV buys is cap. Only the haters want to believe that. If anything, these people who are scamming, which isn't at social gloves, are basically saying all of us fighters, fan bases ain't shit. We all know social gloves put on one of the biggest social media events in history as all of you watched. The real numbers will come out soon. Just know social gloves weren't the ones who collected PPV numbers slash purchases. Don't forget how you watched it. So once again, very reminiscent of the whole app scam. He's basically saying it wasn't us who scammed everybody. No, we were actually scammed by some other company. And that's why we're scamming you. So the two rumors are social gloves bankrupt, which is cap. It's false. It's not true. Everyone that was at the event knows that there's probably like 20,000 people there just at the gate alone. We probably made three or four million dollars. So just that, we're not even talking about pay-per-view numbers. We're not talking Damn. about... We're not talking about brand deals. We're just talking about at the event. Keep going. So social gloves is not bankrupt at all. Keep going. Okay. The second thing is saying that fighters did not get paid. Yes, fighters have not got paid yet, including myself. Why is it that a lot of, if not all of, Austin's businesses never seem to work? So since filming this video, more and more and more lawsuits have come out and Austin McBroom is in even bigger trouble. And I am nine months pregnant and exhausted at this point from the confusing mess that is the lawsuits and allegations against Austin McBroom. So I thought I would bring on a special guest, Riley, my husband, to explain what's going on here and the additional lawsuits that have happened in recent weeks. So here is a breakdown of all of the Austin McBroom lawsuits that we know about currently. Hi, welcome to the first debut of What the Fuck is Happening? If you don't know me, I'm Madison's husband. In this debut feature, we break down what the fuck is happening with Austin McKinney and McBroom. September 2020, Subify, a website used to create an engaging platform for fans to interact with content creators. <laughs> <laughs> this website is used to create an engaging platform for fans to interact with content creators such as Austin McBroom. This company is what the Ace family chose to use for about two months. With using this company, Subify, the Ace family brought in a total of almost $2 million. For the two months of revenue that they made, they did not pay Subify a single dime, ending up in almost $450,000 that the Ace family owed. In addition to the Ace family not paying Subify, they left the platform and created their own platform, stealing Subify's trade secrets. So with that being said, Subify filed a lawsuit for one, not paying them for two months in a total of $450,000, and two, stealing their trade secrets to make the Ace website. April 2021. A Hearn Construction Rental Company, a company that the Ace family used, filed a lawsuit against them. It is not released yet why they're suing, but my guess is they probably didn't pay them. June 2021, the Battle of the Platforms. Austin McBroom created the Battle of the Platforms to bring on big celebrities and the YouTube and TikTok community to fight each other. With this, Austin McBroom hired LiveX Live, a streaming platform, to host the fight and to collect the revenue for the pay-per-view purchases. Right, so you got Social Gloves, which is the promotion company that puts together the event, right, that organizes the fights, that puts together the event. LiveX Live is a live stream partner. In order for an event to take place, you need a live stream partner, right? Everyone thinks that Social Gloves just did everything. No, Social Gloves partnered with LiveX Live, who live streamed it and collected everybody's money, right? After the fight was hosted, Austin McBroom claims that LiveX Live has not paid them yet. Therefore, Austin McBroom cannot pay the people that attended the fight. This resulted in a messy back and forth lawsuit war between McBroom and LiveX Live, with Austin McBroom initiating this lawsuit. So the reason why the fighters haven't got paid yet is because LiveX Live has been holding on to all the funds. They have not paid Social Gloves one penny, and that's why Social Gloves is suing LiveX Live. Side note, LiveX Live is not the best company. LiveX Live is now facing 14 lawsuits concurrently. The company also is currently being sued by two former executives and one investor for fraud. Just a bad move on Austin McBroom's part. Why would he go into hiring this company for a boxing match, openly knowing that they are clearly a shady company going through a lot of legal allegations? This article explains that LiveX Live is getting sued by another company that is owed $650,000. This article was written before the Social Gloves event. A Missouri data discovery firm hired to help LiveX Live prepare its defense against a $26 million lawsuit is asking a California judge to 
to seize more than $650,000 in unpaid legal fees from chief executive Robert Ellen's streaming app company. Anyways, let's move on to why LiveX Live is countersuing Austin McBroom. LiveX Live is now suing them for $100 million worth of damages. It is annotated in the lawsuit documents that LiveX Live is suing Austin McBroom for five different causes involving defamation, such as damaging the share price of LiveX Live, fraudulent business practices, for example, Austin McBroom claimed to LiveX Live's chief marketing officer that we don't need to do marketing. We have 6 million impressions. Austin McBroom and SGP represented to LiveX Live that their anticipated viewership for the event was 2.2 million paying audience members and that SGP was committed to and confident that it would achieve these ticket sales. Austin McBroom's arrogance was astounding as he failed to honor minimal marketing tasks, which SGP was contractually obligated to perform. Simple tasks such as ensuring that the fighters deliver social media posts with links to purchase tickets went unfulfilled. Austin McBroom promised, and it is filed, that they would make an estimated $500 million. LiveX Live filed a lawsuit against Social Gloves, also Austin McBroom, for not reaching the income capstone promised of nearly $500 million. Therefore, LiveX Live did not pay Austin McBroom. A little side note, in July, when the fight was hosted, a car rental company by the name of GC Lux Car Rental claimed through an Instagram post that Austin McBroom did not pay them for the cars that he rented, totaling in about $7,000. Seems like Austin McBroom just doesn't like paying people, you know? Like, who needs money? For an exchange for services. Yeah, who needs money for exchange of services? Okay. No one. Apparently, everyone just wants clout from him yeah. I would love the Austin McBroom clout. So back before this whole battle of the platforms was created and stuff and Social Gloves was already a company, James Harden invested $2 million into the Social Gloves company. After investing into this company, $2 million, which is a lot, you know, it's a lot for everybody. After investing $2 million, James Harden was promised an almost $400,000 profit for the investment. After the fight debuted, James Harden was not paid anything. Therefore, James Harden filed a lawsuit against Social Gloves, Austin McBroom, for $2.4 million, and it's still counting. A couple more people filed a lawsuit against Social Gloves. These people were big TikTokers, or TikTokers? TikTok creators? TikTok content creators? Two TikTokers, Taylor Holden and Nate Wyatt, filed a lawsuit against Social Gloves. Taylor Holder filed a lawsuit against Austin McBroom over boxing event. The lawsuit alleges that Taylor was paid $85,000 up front to sign on to the fight and was guaranteed the amount equal or greater than $2 million or 2% of the adjusted gross revenue of the event. Folks, Austin was bold. He was legit offering gross revenue of the event. To break it down a little more, here is just a quick summarized timeline on all of Austin McBroom's lawsuits. There's probably more out there that we don't know about, but we did our due diligence and I'm honestly tired of this family. Here's our timeline. September 2020, Subify files a lawsuit against the Ace family for not paying them $420,000. April 2021, a Hearn Construction Rental Company files a lawsuit against the Ace family for reasons unknown. Probably not paying. June 12, 2021, LiveX Live files a counter lawsuit against Social Gloves, Austin McBroom, for failing to reach the income capstone after Austin McBroom sued them for withholding their funds. July 10th, 2021, a small car rental company, GC Lux, claimed through an Instagram post, no lawsuit yet that we know about, claimed on an Instagram post that the McBroom family did not pay them for the $7,000 worth of car rentals. August 2nd, 2021, Taylor Holden and Nate Wyatt files a lawsuit against Social Gloves, Austin McBroom, for not paying them almost $2.5 million. Again, August 2nd, 2021, James Harden files a lawsuit against Social Gloves, Austin McBroom, for $2.4 million. This will be in the link below. You done? Hmm. If you wanna see me more often, comment below. And yet still, despite all of these business failures, despite all of these scams, Austin McBroom seems to be still thriving and posting regularly on social media about his lavish and luxurious lifestyle. And it's honestly kind of hard to understand or comprehend the level of wealth that the Ace family is living at. The Ace family has lived in multiple mansions. Their latest mansion was apparently a $9 million mansion that they combined with another mansion 
to build one giant mega mansion. And on top of that, they seem to have multiple new fancy luxurious cars every month, if not week. And I don't understand how someone can live to that level and that magnitude of spending. To me, it just screams not sustainable. Even if you're making an insane amount of money, I don't understand how you're able to continually make such, such large purchases. If I think about even the richest people I know, they might own one or two fancy cars or one nice house, but to that level, I don't know. I, I have to question it personally, but that's just my personal speculation. It really makes me wonder, is all of this sustainable? And well, according to recent allegations, it might not be. Anonymous screenshots circulating on Twitter. Those screenshots included alleged court documents showing the house being foreclosed on accounts of missed mortgage payments. There was also a screenshot of the Ace family's home listed on Zillow labeled as pre-foreclosure. Images of alleged legal documents were leaked that show that the Ace family's LA mansion is up for foreclosure after failing to make mortgage and tax payments. And fans even found the pre-foreclosed home listed on Zillow for seven Seven million four hundred and fifty-six thousand and six hundred dollars. Right, folks. Speaking of the Ace family, according to leaked documents online, they may be allegedly facing foreclosure after missing tax and mortgage payments on their nearly ten million dollar home. And all of this raised massive concerns about the Ace family's financial situation. But uh, don't forget to buy Austin McBroom's course on how he became a social media millionaire aka a failing social media millionaire so that you too can become a failing social media millionaire. It's hard to say if the house will actually foreclose and it's also kind of hard to say definitively whether or not the Ace family is financially struggling. We don't know the inner workings of their finances, of course. Regarding the Ace family house, Austin McBroom recently made a statement claiming that all of the allegations about their housing situation were false. Now, I am not a realtor, so it's hard for me to definitively say whether or not the Ace family home is for sure getting foreclosed on. But it looks like a lot of people who are experts and who are realtors and have access to the database that shows foreclosures have confirmed that the Ace family home is 100% up for foreclosure and that Austin McBroom is definitely losing the house. At least that's what it says on this foreclosure database. I mean, the, the papers are real, so yeah. what? No, there's no question about it. Zach's brother has, he's like a realtor. You want to tell the story, Zach? So I don't oh yeah, he's not a realtor yet. He's getting his license. He's almost going to get it, but um, you can... There's a back-end system for people in real estate to see um, title and what you own a house and we verified that he did in fact default. But it feels like Austin McBroom is like a circus ringleader or a magician. So maybe he'll be able to pull something out of his hat like a con artist or Ponzi scheme to fix this money issue through scamming and creating another money issue that he has to fix down the line. Ultimately, it's all unsustainable and eventually his house of cards will completely crumble. So I think really only time will tell. We'll see if the house ends up foreclosing. So far, Austin McBroom has vehemently denied these claims and said their house is not foreclosing. A lot of these recent business ventures may also be a way to get cash really quickly because it might be needed. All I can say is that it wouldn't be that surprising if the Ace family ends up having a ton of money troubles. We've seen time and time again with people that portray this insane, rich, lavish lifestyle that no matter how much you make, you can always spend more than you're making and get yourself into financial trouble. Though it seems like people like Austin are always able to somehow make things happen and move things around. Is that a spider? Oh. The downfall of Austin McBroom and in turn the Ace family is disheartening because at the end of the day, if Austin McBroom did none of these scams and shady businesses, he would have still been a millionaire. With his success on YouTube, he could have still lived a great and cushy life. But instead, Austin McBroom wanted more and more. He wanted more fame, more money, and more power. And it looks like in the end, he'll end up with nothing but just a giant media circus. It's hard to wish Austin any ill will because of his adorable family. So I'll end this video by saying that I just hope he learns 
and eventually stops doing all of this shady stuff. I hope that he legitimately changes and gets involved with legitimate businesses. And most importantly, stops creating the same type of shady businesses and scams over and over and over again. You'd think that he'd learn by now after being accused of running a ton of scams, but I guess they've worked for him, so why change anything? I wanted to end this video with a little bit of empathy, but after a few weeks of editing and looking into more and more of this situation, I just feel like I can't do that. I can't go that easy on Austin because the resounding thought that I've had through the process of editing this video is that at the end of the day, the people that Austin McBroom screwed over the most are his own children. Austin's children are the face of the Ace Family brand. They built that brand. They built what it stood for. Without Austin's children, Austin himself would be nothing. He would have nothing. He used his children to build up the Ace Family quote unquote empire as he had his children work their entire childhoods, the entire timeline of their existence, how long they've been alive on this earth to build up the brand. And now these children will end up getting nothing out of it and probably won't see a dime of the money that they rightfully deserve out of this brand because of the poor decisions that Austin McBroom has made. I called it, man. Those kids are not going to see a dime. Well, there's not going to be a mean, dime to give, saying. apparently. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, you know, the Ace family, this guy's been scheming for so long. And now he's about to lose everything, which he deserves. He's got so many views. He's got so much uh, uh, legitimate money. If he wasn't such a greedy fucking piece of shit, he would be doing clock. great in life. So at the end of the day, the people he scammed the most are his own children. And that aspect makes me upset and makes me feel like Austin McBroom does not deserve an easy pass or a hope for change in the future. Instead, his children deserve something that ensures that they're able to get what's rightfully theirs out of this Ace Family brand. But I'll cover that aspect of Family Channels a little bit more in part two. I hate that spider. It's so tiny and creepy. So that's all for today's video. If you made it this far, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video where we go into covering Catherine McBroom, Austin's better half. Until then, have a good one, bye. I could not have made this video without the help of a ton of incredible creators who have been covering the Ace family for a while now, and all of the resources that I used for this video are linked in a Google Doc in the description, but I wanted to shout out three specific creators who have done so much extensive coverage on the Ace family, they really deserve a ton of credit. So a huge special thank you to the creators Choice TV, Sloan, and Deaf Noodles. Choice did a ton of coverage on the Ace family basketball scams. Sloan has done a ton of coverage on just a variety of scams and shady businesses that the Ace Family has participated in. And Deaf Noodles has posted a lot of detailed information about the Ace Family lawsuits. So thank you so much to all three of those creators and please go follow them. I'm going to link their channel specifically in the description.